Hello, everyone. Welcome back. I am Christine Dixon of The Ordinary Sacred, and I'm going to continue this series on identifying cultural burdens. And today we're going to identify cultural burdens in the area of education. And so if you haven't watched the last video, I would recommend going back and watching that because I do an overview of um, this technique and I start with um, burdens that we have, cultural burdens and personal burdens around family, the topic of family. And I do the exercise with you. And so today I'm going to, I'll go ahead and just share real quick. Um, oh, <laughs> hold on. Let's start the slideshow from the current slide. Here we go. Um, so as I said in the last video, this is from uh, a slideshow that I'm going to be presenting in a workshop uh, coming up on August 9th, as a Friday. It'll be from one to three central time um, with an additional optional hour of Q&A afterward. So maybe till four central time if you wanna stay. Um, and I'm really excited to lead you all in a collective unburdening of the burden of scarcity which is something that Derek Scott requested in the last video he made before he passed. Um, but we're gonna learn all about what cultural burdens are, um, identifying them, why they're, why they're hard to identify. We're going to brainstorm lots of different burdens that we might have, and then the ways that we wake up from them and the ways that we connect to our own inner wisdom and the ways that we unburden uh, some of these messages and ideas if we decide that they're not in alignment with our value or our values. So this is one of the exercises and we will not have a chance to do all of these uh, categories that you see here on the right in the workshop. We'll probably practice with one of them, but I really want to have enough time in the workshop to do the, the, the unburdening. So um, I thought, well, I'll make some videos and we can practice together kind of in uh, preparation for the workshop if you want to attend. Of course, if you can't, I understand. Um, and I will have a recording of it afterward. Um, all my workshops are $20. So um Let's see, by the time you're watching this, I will probably have the link for you. So I'll go ahead and put that in the description below. I'll put the link if you want to sign up for the workshop um, next Friday. But uh, you are welcome, whether you join the workshop or not, to do these exercises with me. So if you watched the last video, we did this white room experiment where we are going to, and I'm going to lead you now through the one on education. Um, it's really a way to relax and kind of have some of our thinking parts relax back so that we can receive information from the parts of us that might be more in our subconscious. Okay. So we're going, I'm going to do this with the topic of education in this video, and I'll go ahead and lead you through it now. So the first thing to do is just kind of get comfortable. Um, I do like to, to sit up but be supported uh, in my back, have my feet on the ground. <sighs> Take a deep breath or two if that feels right to you. And I'm just feeling my body in this space. I can feel my feet touching the carpet. I can feel the weight of my legs and I can feel them touching the chair, my back where it connects to the chair. I like to imagine gravity pulling down on my shoulders and my jaw. Again, this just helps me relax, helps my, my body relax a little bit. And I kind of ask myself, am I safe? And I would encourage you if you're not safe in your environment, it's very hard for your body to relax. So 
do whatever you need to do to be safe or have privacy. If you're wanting to join me in this experiment. But once you do feel somewhat relaxed, I invite you to imagine that you are in a white room. So you're sitting relaxed on your chair, but everything around you is kind of a bright white. The floor is painted white. The four walls around you are white. The ceiling is painted white and it's a fairly bright room. Empty, white and bright. And this emptiness kind of helps us be able to just receive out of the nothingness, anything that our subconscious parts want us to know. So like last time, we're going to give a topic. And the topic this time is education. This is one of the sources of cultural burdens and messaging, uh, or we might have messages and expectations about education. Again, it's just the, the wide topic. So you're presenting that topic and you're kind of asking the question, what were the messages, what were the expectations that I got through or about education? <sighs> and again, just relax in this space. There's no right or wrong. You're just asking to receive information and it can feel like fragments, like little pieces, memories, images, it could be objects, could be words, sounds, and they'll kind of flash or move in front of you. There's no judgment of them. There's no assessment. It's just a receiving. What does your inner family want you to know about education? And I might invite you here to pause the video and just receive for as long as you would like to. And you might write things down as you receive them, or you might write them down after. And so if you're coming back now, you might write things down. Um, but I would invite you and encourage you to thank your system for whatever they showed you. This is usually very insightful. Or what they didn't show you. Maybe they're not ready or maybe there were parts blocking the way and that's good to know too. Whatever they did show you, Thank them for that. And when you're ready, you can take a breath, feel your body in this space, maybe move around and gradually open your eyes, adjust to the light, the air. Okay. And just like in the last video, I actually, this is, I also did this um, prior to the recording. So I'm going to let you know what came up for me. And again, it may be very different than what came up for you. And I'd love to hear what came up for you in, in the comments below if you wanna share. So what came to me was um, images of teachers yelling at children and kids cowering, like kind of ashamed looking down. Um, and then I heard the words, be a good girl. That was a really pronounced uh, thing that was kind of auditory, be a good girl, be a good girl. And I kind of saw images throughout from kindergarten all the way up. Um, I saw images of my parents going to teacher conferences and the teachers praising me and saying what a good girl I was, right? So it wasn't just, um, you're, it wasn't necessarily you're being a bad girl. It was, you're being a good girl, keep it up. <laughs> um, <clears throat> I saw an image of this paddle, this big wooden paddle that the principal had outside his door. 
in my elementary school. And it was meant to be this um, image of fear, right? If you get out of line, if you misbehave, you are going to be sent to the principal's office and he is going to hit you with this. And I remember hearing stories of kids who did get hit by it back in my day. That did happen. So there was a lot of fear in me around that. Um, I got an image of this recess lady. I forget her name, but she was very mean, constantly yelling at the kids. Um, and then there was this kind of um, idea that recess or fun was not real education. That anything that you enjoyed um, wasn't real education. So it's kind of this idea of kind of like no pain, no gain, but like if if you enjoy it, it's not legitimate. <laughs> the only legitimate education is the stuff that you absolutely hate that you plow through. Um, another big message that came through was my worth is in being smart. So I, again, just like I was able to achieve being a good girl and was praised, I was able to show that I was quote unquote smart and I was rewarded for that. And so there was just this understanding that that's where my worth was. Um, that's what kind of kept me safe was, was being smart, being studious. Um, and then after that, there was just like uh, these like signs or like uh, ticker tape kind of like messages that kept going, like scrolling by. And they were saying, conform, obey, comply, do as you're told do not be different. It was kind of like, don't you dare be different, fall in line, be a cookie cutter version of what you're expected to be. And um, so that's what showed up for me. Um, again, this is going to be very personal to every person that does this. It, again, it's, it's what was given to us by our culture. It's what was reinforced either through punishment or reward and praise. Um, it's what our parents valued, what our teachers valued. It has to do with what our capabilities were, if we were able to comply or not, right? Whether we complied or rebelled and any traumas we experienced, perhaps if we rebelled. Um, and again, just, just the repeated messaging that was given to us through, whether it was explicitly said, be a good girl, or it was implicitly reinforced and, you know, modeled, we saw it, uh, or just messaging like the principal's, you know, sign of fear outside his door in the paddle. Okay, so um, I'm so curious what came up for you there around education. And it might be, I mean, again, I could have spent so much longer on this and come up with many, many other things, but this provided me with several big uh, trailheads. And like I said, in the last example, many of these for me have already been challenged in my system, uh, unburdened, but I can get curious. Um, and I just have so much compassion and understanding and empathy for my system and for my young parts that went through education that's what I'm feeling right now. I'm feeling like deep appreciation for the unburdening that my system has done. I, I'm feeling the appreciation for how hard that would be, right? For these parts to receive this message over and over and over and over and over and over. I'm, I'm just getting the sense of like how much they make sense and how hard it would be for them to release that burden, how scary it would be because I have to be a good girl. I have to be the smartest one in the room or else, right? This is my worth. This is my safety. This is my belonging. Um, so for them to be able to release that. And for me, a lot of the challenging of those ideas um, didn't really come until I became an educational therapist. And I worked with people who were not capable of complying with the system, their system had other strengths that were not celebrated by education. And I could see that very clearly. And so then I started questioning the expectations of, you know, you, you have to sit still in a chair all day and do everything you hate 
head push yourself to do it or you have to only learn auditorily or visually or you know I started really challenging a lot of those things um and my systems kind of reverence for education and credentials has gone <laughs> way down I think there's just so many different ways to be competent at something to follow your passions um to not be a good girl, to challenge the systems, to not comply with what is not meant for you. Uh, so I've unburdened so much of this. And I understand, you know, my my worth and value has nothing to do with my intelligence or my success academically. So, and that all the things that I enjoy are really what I should pursue <laughs> rather than all the things that I that I hate. So um, I've done so much um, around that. So there can even be, if you have done, you know, if where you are now is very different than the messages you received, you can celebrate that and really appreciate that. Um, but perhaps you're still in in a lot of that burden and, and those are trailheads for you to explore and see how much of that burden is personal to that part of you or can be released as a cultural burden and just questioned and say, is that true? nah, let's release it. You know, it doesn't serve us. It's not in alignment with our value or our values or the value of other people or something. Um, again, you can identify things that you think are good, that you think are essentially legacy cultural gifts. And you can say, I choose to keep this. But again, it's a choice. You have the conscious freedom of choice to say, I don't want this anymore. Or I do want this. I choose it now, right? It's uh, you're coming into your own agency and power. Um, all right. So that's that one on education. Again, I'd love to hear what came up for you, or if you have any questions in the comments below. And in the next video, we're going to do this exercise on the topic of religion. <laughs>